Visuals and tonality do not make up for a bad argument. So that one always needs to be at the, at the brim. The visuals, you can have that about 50% full and still be fine. But ideally, you want to have each one of these buckets completely filled to the brim. Welcome to the High Voltage Business Builders, a show where we interview people committed to making their next million through passive income using real estate, brokering, e-commerce, and beyond. If you're a passionate business builder yourself, visit VoltageB2B.com to get in touch now. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the High Voltage Business Builders Podcast. I'm Neil, uh, as you know, and if you're not paying attention, you can go look up uh, who I am online. If you don't care to know, then let's get into the guest today. Nick, I couldn't rhyme something better within your last, I was going to say Nick the Scourge Verge, but then that doesn't actually sound really good. You probably don't want to be known as that. So maybe you introduce yourself up for a minute and let everybody know who you are uh, because you're not a scourge. I think you're an awesome guy. Thanks. Welcome to the call. On the verge, Nick Verge is usually, on the verge of Nick Verge. <laughs> on, on the verge, Nick Verge is what when I was in high school. That's what everyone called me. On the verge, Nick Verge. I had a, uh, I was the local daily like news for for our for our high school. Like on TV, when give the announcements, I, I was on there. I had that. a show called On the Verge, so that was what everyone knew me by. On but the verge. Okay, yeah, got it. It's not what I'm known for now. Now I'm known as the VS the VSL guy. Um, I help people create high converting VSLs. I've done around. 15 mil for clients uh, with my video sales letters. Um, so I've worked with people like Jordan Belfort. I've worked with people like Beatrice Kulian, a couple others who Neil knows that I cannot mention on air just because I'd, I'd like to protect myself. Names that necessarily Shall cannot be mentioned. They should not be mentioned because of who they can put me with. And I'm, I'm very careful on the way I craft my image. <laughs> That's right. So he, he knows exactly who I'm talking about. I know about. exactly who we're talking about. Friends. I've worked with a couple different celebrities um, on VSLs, but the people who've got the majority of my results are not actually celebrities. These are people who are just business owners, and that's all they focus on is their business. Um, people who sell anything from similar to what you do with Amazon FBA to um, similar to like mindset coaching and how to actually change your identity. Like I've worked with all types of different niches, even something as simple as skincare. Um, so I'm, I'm just here to pr provide a lot of value on VSLs and how to make a really high converting VSL. Well, let's dig in. Copywriting and VSL, right? These are your things. Absolutely. And let's talk That's a little bit about like what is happening in that space right now for somebody who might be listening and a coach, a lead gen, a small business owner, or somebody who's wanting to understand what that means or what its implications are to the business. Let's talk copywriting and VSL. Yeah. So, I mean, like, let's look at, I'm going to use an example to explain this for a second. So like, look at Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was like the peak bodybuilder. Everyone just wanted to look like Arnold. Um, so everyone was trying to copy Arnold. So what happens is that when someone comes into an industry, they, they usually set the trend for the industry. And so what happens is then everybody is trying to emulate that. And we saw this with VSLs with people like Sam Evans who came in and he created his really successful webinar and his really successful VSL and everyone tries to copy it. So what ends up happening is that what a lot of people don't understand is with market sophistication, the more time someone sees that style of that video, the more resistant they become to that because they're aware that they're being sold. So if you look at something like, uh, and I'm going to give credit to my guy, Alan Sultanic from Nothing Held Back, who kind of mentioned this to me because I think it was an amazing um, insight, is that it, it, people, when they're aware, like people love to, to buy, but they hate to be sold. So when people become aware of the fact they're being sold, that's when resistance builds up. So like look at seminars for a while. Everyone kind of looked at that as just like, oh, it was me just getting together and it's a free seminar for me to figure out how to fix this. Well, it was actually a pitch fest. And then there was teleseminars. Oh, we're just going to do it over the phone. Then it was a pitch fest. Oh, a free training. It's not a free training. It's actually a VSL. Oh, just a strategy session on the call. It's not a strategy session. It's a sales call. So everything is like that. And what happens is that everyone is copying the previous forms of the VSLs and they're not making anything really unique at all. And so what ends up happening is that people don't really watch the video because it's like, oh, I've already seen this like a thousand times before. And they just put you in the bucket with everyone else. Um, and a lot of the times it's not a bucket you want to be in because a lot of the other people in that bucket are not good people. They're, they're people who sell uh, BS basically to people. And that's kind of that classic guru image that everyone jokes around about. So I think the thing that I'm seeing that's very pertinent in the in the industry right now or important in the industry right now is that a lot of people are trying to emulate people from the past or trying to copy other people and what I mean, or just frameworks or whatever. They join a program. It's like, hey, here's how to make your VSL. And they give them a, a simple framework hacking thing, right? Which yeah. is basically going in and just stealing a bunch of somebody else's content and format. Yeah, exactly. something like that. Or like, yeah. hey, like here's the old way versus the new way. Like all these methods and people don't realize that it doesn't cause you to stand out. The whole point of the video sales letter is for you to stand out. But that that's where I see the, the industry out right now. We're starting to see people who understand this and are crafting like really unique VSLs and are investing in it and are seeing amazing results. 
And then there's the people who are slowly starting to see their VSL die out. And they maybe have a couple months, maybe close to a year left before they're going to have to actually go and restart it all over again. Yeah. I mean, it's the message at the end of the day. Format's great. And if you don't understand what a video sales letter is, folks, that's you probably have seen them or witnessed them in the internet world and never understood it. Or maybe you understand the language of VSL. Uh, so that's one of the things that I think, Nick, you're bringing obviously clarity to that. It's a video sales letter. But the key here is to not make it feel like a sales letter. The key here is to invite a conversation, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it shouldn't feel like a pitch. It should, because it, what happens is people oftentimes try and force the conclusion onto the person. But the best copy that I've seen is where the person arrives at the conclusion themselves. So it's also understanding like the length of time on the video. So like, okay, someone like you or me, Neil, we're busy. Like we run a business. If I'm going to buy something on it, I'm not watching a 30 minute training. I don't know about you. How many 30 minute trains have you watched really? Not like, recently. I barely get through a 20 minute podcast, which is why these exactly. are only 20 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> like exactly. You know what I mean? So it's, it's difficult. So like, it's also yep. understanding like the demographic you're talking to. So if yep. you're talking to business owners like this, like me, me or Neil, but, well, you need to do something quick. It needs to be five, 10 minutes. It needs to be max that amount. Well, that has to hook me. If that hooks yeah. me, right? Yeah. And I like what you've got and I hear what you're saying and it resonates the language and the bullet points in my head and adds up to something of conclusive, then I'll go, con I'll go get more of your content. I yeah. will go consume more and more whatever hours it is of content later in Absolutely. that process, right? And that's Just maybe goal. not all at once in one time. Yeah, exactly. And that that's the goal. I mean, it's it's unfortunate that uh, most people don't really understand that. They they just think, oh, I'm just going to pitch and that's it. And yeah. people don't, I'm really interested in that. So it's like, white really, noise. yeah, yeah. They, they just get ignored. That's most people, their videos just get ignored. You're usually where people are using a video sales letter to, to give some context. Maybe someone's listening to this and they're like, well, how do I use this? You either, you're either selling like a low ticket product or a high ticket product with it. And either you're trying to just sell the product on the video or you're trying to book a call for it. Um, so this is people who are trying to book appointments for their agency, people who are trying to, you know, get spots in their coaching program, whatever it is, usually people are using the, the video sales that are just book a call on average. It's the most common one right around now. Well, how um, many people actually take them and disqualify? Like, okay, how, how many want the sales later to disqualify the wrong people as opposed to just qualifying everybody? Yeah, that's where most people fuck up. Is it well, just, it, that's it, where I'm getting down to, right? Because yeah. most people aren't thinking about it in terms of the non-selling part, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like exactly. the non-pushiness. Yeah, and even like with, so you said mentioned sales letter. So the sales letter was kind of like the granddaddy of the video sales letters. The sales letter was the long form letter, but it's like at, at this point, really, the only market that sales letters really work with is people that are like 45, 50 plus. Um, because, well, you, you older folk are used to reading a lot. My generation <laughs> and millennials, we don't, we don't have an attention span for that. So we don't, we don't really want to. Um, hey now, come on, that's 40 plus it, it, it is true. You know, you, you guys yeah. grew up on reading and shit. Yeah, we, but only if we get our glasses out correctly. If we get yeah. our glasses out correctly, then yeah. we'll be able to. In these yeah, just like that on the brim of the nose. Exactly. Yes, but yeah. that's that's yeah. where the sophistication comes from. I mean, yeah. it's, the, it's the movement of the hand. It's the series. Yeah, yeah. Of, right? <laughs> exactly. I can pull that off at my age. Um, but no, you're right. It really gets down to knowing your audience. As it looked, I mean, that's what we're getting down to, right? What format yeah. works for the audience that resonates most with who you're talking to? So like even with the what you were saying a second ago with uh, disqualifying people on it, you know, I have I have a, a set of three questions that I use that usually I, I intro this in VSLs or I have this within the first couple minutes. So the three questions are like this. The first question is the disqualifier question. I'm going to explain the questions and I'll come through and give examples. So first question is the disqualifier question. Second question is an empathy-based question. Third question is an opportunity-based question. So it would look something like this. So let's say we're talking about weight loss. It would say something like, hey, are you trying to lose weight and get a six-pack? Something like that. Let's just say, are you, and I could even go even further than that. I'm like, hey, are you a single guy who's trying to lose weight and get a six-pack so you can be attractive to women? That's even further than that. Or I could say, hey, are you a, are you a girl who's trying to get toned so you can look attractive to other men? Like something like that, okay? So what that does, that question then, First of all, I can't, like, if I just asked you right now, do you like ice cream? The answer just popped in Neil's head. Probably yes. He likes ice cream. Rocky Road. I was thinking. Yeah, he okay. likes Rocky Road. Well, I do because I like, well, I like it as a kid, but I also like the uh, the Goonies and Chunk, you know. Rocky Road. Sorry. All right, keep going. But but so you, you have to answer the question. You can't answer the question. It, if it's a yes or no question, you have to answer the question. What that does is it gets rid of all the people we're not talking to right now. Um, and I think that's a super important part of the VSL that most people don't actually think about. Um, so we have to get rid of most of the people. The next question is the empathy-based question. What this shows is it's like, hey, 
you understand my situation. So I would say, does it ever feel like when you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror, you're kind of avoiding the mirror, you don't want to look at it really, and you know you know that you want to fix this, but you've tried so many times and all the diets from keto to paleo to carnivore, all of them just don't work. They may get you temporary results, but the weight just comes piling back on. What that shows there is, wow, this person totally understands my situation, and I'm that's exactly what I'm dealing with. So I have now disqualified all the wrong people. I've built empathy with that. Hey, I understand your situation with the person, and then opportunity. What would you tell, or what would you say if I told you that there is a brand new diet that nobody really has talked about yet that actually allows you to still eat carbs, allows you to still eat protein, still get fats, eat all your favorite foods, but still be able to lose weight consistently every single month? So within a month from now, you'll actually be ten pounds less. Two months from now, you'll be thirty pounds less. So on and so forth. So like we just base like that. I'm kind of just shooting off the cuff here, but you see what I mean? Like I'm now giving them the opportunity, and now they're like okay, now I want to hear about this. That's a really great way to just get rid of the wrong people, keep the right people, show the right people I understand your current situation, and then present them the opportunity for that. Now, how long is too long for a VSL? Or is that an objective question? Or is that, I'm not trying to trick you because... <laughs> no, that's a good question. So a lot of it depends, again, on the, the audience. So yes. attention spans nowadays are pretty bad for people my age and people, um, millennials, and, and, and overall, it's, I think... Less than a goldfish at this point is actually what's been proven by science. So it's like, okay, that's not good. So we don't have a lot of time. Um, seconds or less. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. So it's like, it depends on your audience. So if you have an older audience, I think you can get away with a longer form video. Um, if you have a younger audience, I would just use the baseline rule if it's a younger audience that you're selling to um, anywhere from like 25 to like 35, whatever. Like that type yeah. of audience, I would just I would just focus on keeping it as short as possible. Um, but it also depends on like how aware are they of their problem of different solutions. Like, let's say that person has never heard of keto or paleo or any of the other diets. They don't even know like what calorie intake is. They don't even understand that concept. Not too many people are like that. But you know what I mean? If they don't know at all what's going on, you have to explain a lot more to them. It's based on more knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we work at it. I mean, mine literally is a podcast of 45 minutes um, that it, that I found works the best because I'm talking to a 40 plus audience usually. And just so, you know, guys, to give you context from a different angle, uh, they're usually business owners who want to do other things in business. And so they need to understand that I understand the business, I understand the language and the flow, and they may not always understand the aspects of what we do. So there's a bit of knowledge transfer that occurs during that to kind of teach them up and elevate them so that by the time they get to the end, they understand what's going on. No pitches no slides, no, you know, push to the end and bonus offers or none of that nonsense. It literally is a conversational podcast they listen in on. And like you said, they qualify themselves through the process of understanding because they're like, oh, wait, this is actually more serious than, hey, I'm just getting pitched. Yeah. And I mean, the way you the way you go about constructing your VSL is directly correlated to what type of customers you're going to get. Because I mean, think about it. It's like, that's the bait that you're using at the end of the fishing rod. So it's like certain baits work with certain types of people. So like, I think with what you're saying with the the pitching and the value stacks and like the Russell Brunson style things, like, I mean, let's just be honest. Let's, you, you have you been in that Facebook click funnels group? <laughs> I troll it just to see what's happening. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. I, I don't think there's, I mean, no offense. I think it's a great, it's a software, it's a service. It's done a great job, but sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm in there and I'm watching a lot of really nonsensical things happen. Yeah. It's like the average IQ in there is like five. So it's like, it's not, it's, it's not like super sophisticated, but that, it's got that style of, yeah, that style of, of selling though attracts usually, um, I would say lower emotional state people and just less sophisticated people, less intelligent people. But I found that when I'm just more direct and I just pitch someone and I just tell them and I, and I speak to them like a human being, I attract people that appreciate that. And the people that appreciate that usually are more intelligent. I don't want gullible people in my program. I don't want my clients to have gullible people in their program um, because then also what that leads to is chargebacks, refunds, like, oh, I thought that was this or whatever. There's a lot that that can go down there. So I think that's important too. And also understanding that your personality type, I, I, found, I find this so interesting. Your personality type attracts like who you are usually is who the people in your group are. So like, for instance, I'm in Sam Ovens group. And he's like very introverted and he's very, um, I would say, analytical and process orientated. So everyone in there is analytical and process orientated, which I find just hilarious. I think that's that's so funny. No, it is who you who you attract is really those who you can serve if you can speak to them on more points than just business. 
So part of the thing with the VSL and the copyright that I know you do, and we're just going to reiterate this back to people that are listening, is to speak as yourself. And this has been a big challenge in the last few years because some people feel like, well, if I talk on certain topics, if I cover geopolitical, even religious, or any other topics related to science, no science, what's happening in the world, et cetera, um, that suddenly I'm going to offend people and they're not going to want to buy from me. I yeah. found the opposite true. Just stay transparently you. Yeah, the haters yeah. are going to come out, but if you don't have haters, you're probably not doing something right. Totally. And if no one's I mean, going to argue with you, then okay. you don't have an opportunity to shine through it uh, yeah. and show who you truly are. And then there's the basis between, oh, I'm okay, I'm an introvert or I'm an extrovert. You don't have to be either of those because technically I'm an introvert who, who basically fronts as an extrovert because really I would rather not be an extrovert. And yeah. I have no problem telling that to people. I prefer to yeah. just kind of do my life and stuff uh, as yeah. opposed to have to be on the front lines of everything constantly. Um, but I have to push myself out there. That's always been a challenge for me. Not as much a challenge yeah. for you. You're a pretty outgoing guy. Easy, dude. I mean, you should see me when I get a little bit of alcohol inside of me. It's hilarious. <laughs> we, were, we were at the we were at the Phoenix Open here in Arizona. I mean, my buddy Stefan, super uh, shouts out Stefan Georgia. He he bought me like a ticket to the Phoenix Open. Just wanted to come with me. I think because I'm a fun time when I when we're drinking. I'm a, I'm a great time. For a good time, um, call me. I, 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 yeah, call me. Call me on my number. But we were like, <laughs> I mean, it's unlimited booze. Like, so we were like having a great time. We're drinking. And then we ended up going on a just a walk around the golf course and just you know talking to well, talking to people. I was talking to people, um, but just to, that wasn't the point of why we walked out. We just wanted to go see kind of the different holes and everything like that. And I think I must have said "God bless you" to maybe sixty-seven people, and I complimented at probably about two hundred separate people. Started random random people just Nick Verge and knew me and just walk up to me and I'd be like, "Oh shit!" Like we went to high school together or we did this or whatever. And like he was just shocked at how many people knew me and how many people like liked me. I thought that was the funniest thing. I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess I kind of am. I, I some I I think I'm an ambivert. I'm very introverted at times, not so much with talking to people, but just that people drain me. But this is kind of irrelevant towards VSLs. We're kind of going down the rabbit hole. Oh, we're getting there. to know you a little bit better. That's okay. That's so we've great. understood yeah. that you, everybody knows you're an alcoholic. So we have now yeah, defined. Yeah, great. Awesome. Just, yeah. Oh, great. Oh, well, back up. Hold on just a second. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. That's great. Uh, Nick and I go way back in case you guys haven't caught you on can't to that. Tell. You no, can't tell. No, I couldn't tell. Not at all. But what is the deal with all the copywriters suddenly aligning themselves to like Arizona? What's the, it's like, are you guys creating like a copywriter compound or something out there? Um, I'm not too sure really what it is that attracts people here. I think it's just that it's a free state, you know, um, just everyone wants to come here. I think that it's like one of the, one of the three like good safe states right now. I mean, I don't know where you live. Where do you live right now? The free state of Missouri, as I refer okay. to it now. There you go. The free yeah, state. I mean, we're backed up by Texas, and you just go around the horn to get to Florida. And of course, you got Alabama, Mississippi, and all the rednecks down in the south and and stuff. And we're all pretty much in the free free country, as we call it out here. Uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like it's it's for the people that want to live in the city but don't mm. want to deal with like BS. You know what I mean? And even right. me now, like, I feel like I, I, okay. At this, here's kind of my goal right now: is like, <laughs> fuck, in the city, live in the city, find the wife get that and then take her and then go live in the middle of the country and then just, just run away to the middle of the country. <laughs> just leave. Uh, Cause I like that. So follow that process. That's a great it's thing. A, it's a great process. I mean, that's yes. kind of my goal. Cause I'm just like, I do not, I, I like the city, but at the same time, just like, I just want to be able to walk out and there'd be no one within like a hundred miles. Find yourself a country girl who stumbled into the city. And then uh, as soon as you guys find out and get going, she's like, back to the country. Then you don't have to fight it at all. That's what I did anyways. And it worked, it worked really well. Because that's, that's technically, route. I was a concrete jungle boy growing up in a cul-de-sac in cities and then living in cities and more cities and bigger cities. And then I met a girl who lived in the country. And she's like, hey, we're going to go to 20 acres. I, we got to get to 20 acres. And me being like, 20 acres? Like, how in the world do you manage 20 acres? So I have 40. Yeah. Uh, and that's yeah. not enough. Now, I kind of want another 100 at least. Um, yeah, because it feels like the world's encroaching. But it's all about knowing your audience. And that's that's literally this whole concept of, of what we're talking about. And is it going to be easier to form a VSL, get on a video and talk to your customer if you know the framework that you literally just laid down and apply it to your customer? What are their yeah. problems? What are they dealing with? What do they know about what they're dealing with? What do they don't know about what they're dealing with? And then invite them to come take a look. Like, Absolutely. just invite them along. Don't go for the like, it's the whole thing. It's a joke. And, and we were talking about dating. <laughs> And it reminds me, you don't just walk up to a girl and be like, hey, let's go home together. Like, you're going to get yeah. slapped. And yeah. that's like how many people approach their marketing. They Absolutely. approach it as slap, slap marketing. Just I'm making pitch, it up yeah. right now. Yeah, slap marketing. That's what it is. Slap well, marketing. I, yeah. I mean, so basically, I, I can I can deliver some value nukes right now just to really let's like do it. Bring it in. 
so basically I, I posted up my Facebook profile. I don't know what it was, dude. I was just kind of laying on that couch back there. And all of a sudden I was just like kind of talking towards asking God some questions. And I asked God, I was like, you know, what should I be doing with my business? And you know, I, the thing that I got as the message was like, just go give without expecting anything in return. And I just went to my computer and wrote up a Facebook post and just said, Hey, I want to do four free audits for someone's VSLs. Um, just first four people that hit me up, get the opportunity. And Within like, I think 30 or 40 minutes, I had four people that hit me up on it. And I was like, cool, close it down. That was it. There wasn't any like hope to like sell people on anything or anything like that. I didn't pitch anyone afterwards. There wasn't any sales call attached. I just did it because I felt like doing it. And I was kind of bored. And I was like, why not? So what was interesting, though, was what I got from auditing these people's VSLs, because usually people are paying me to audit their VSLs or people are paying me to write the VSLs or, or create them. Uh, but I realized something just based on what I've been doing my own research on. And there was three really key points that I realized that caused people's VSLs to just suck. Like they were like not good and what caused people to drop off. So the first thing was that they weren't really capturing their exogenous attention. So this is a term that I, I found out and I think is really, really interesting. So, okay, imagine that you're an ape, okay? You're an ape and you're swinging from tree to tree and you're eating bananas and you're slinging poop and you're having fun. You're having a silly ape time. You know, you're having a good time. What happens though when you see a panther right there? All of a sudden, your attention goes to that. Oh, crap. That's not supposed to be here. And then let me go alert the other apes. And then there's a certain cry. That's actually a fun fact, completely random. But they have certain cries that mean get to the top of the trees. And then there's certain cries that mean get to the skinniest branch in the tree. So it's like the panther can't get to the skinniest branch. So uh, that's unrelated. But, but it's the same thing with attention is that, you know, that ape is able to ignore all of the other stuff. But then the second it sees something that is oh, and that stands out. Oh, I want to go, I, I need to pay attention to that. Oh, that's where it evolutionarily comes from. So what happens is that most people's VSLs, they start off and they are just diving right into, oh, okay, guys, today we're going to be talking about blah, 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 blah. And like, these are four ways to, or my four-step method for, or how to blank without blank while blank. You know, like they, they have those, you know, but that's like the template. Most oh, people really have. is. How to go blank yeah. yourself. Yeah. How to go blank yourself. Yeah. And so it's like, there's all these different templates that they use for it. And I think it's just fascinating to me that people don't ever realize that, well, what happens, again, like what I was talking about earlier with sophistication is the more people see it, it people don't want to watch that style of video. People don't want to listen to that. So what it's doing is it's ignoring exogenous attention because what happens when someone's seen it enough times is it's just like the monkey who's seen the environment a thousand times. He doesn't even really pay attention to it. So it doesn't capture yeah. their attention. So what the first part of your VSL needs to have is some sort of a pattern interrupt. Now, it can't just be like an Oompa Loompa on a stripper pole. That doesn't really like do anything. That will create the effect of people wondering, that's not related to anything. Are you in your right mind? <laughs> yeah, like what's going on? And that's going right. to take their attention versus that. It needs to lead into your argument. So let's just say, like I, I use a couple different things. Number one was those questions that I asked you because no one can really ignore questions. Number two is a statement. So like for one in a VSL that I'm writing is, you're fired. That's the first line in the VSL. You're fired. That's actually what you're going to be telling yourself at the end of this video because you're going to want to fire yourself. You're going to want to quit your job. I'm going to show you exactly how to quit your job. Something like that. I'm, I'm very snappy. I'm punchy. I'm getting to the point really quickly with that. It's like, oh, wait, whoa. That's like, it, it's not like the traditional style of VSL. The person now is linked into it. They're just not linked in like the, the platform, but they're just like stuck. They're like, oh, wow. Like I need to watch this now because think about it. When you're watching a really good movie, you kind of forget about everything else that's going on. Like you forget you're just in the movie. You're just a part of the movie. You know, your living room doesn't exist. The movie theater doesn't exist. You're just a part of the movie. So you have to have something and e even objects are a good thing. One of my most notorious VSLs um, starts off with pancakes in it. And everyone like wondered, why did I do that? And I'm like, well, because pancakes, I, I, I looped it into the argument. You know, I was saying, hey, like the spatula used to make that, like someone bought that on Amazon and like, you know, someone bought that from someone overseas da, 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 and then it was the whole Amazon FBA offer. So that style where there's something that they're seeing, whether it's an object, a statement, questions, whatever, that creates that exogenous attention where now someone is like focused in on it and all of a sudden they can't like, they, they can't not pay attention to it. If it's like everyone else's, well, then, you know, with the headline, how to, whatever, or hey, guys, today, here's who this is for, here's who this is not for, all that, like, you're just going to look like everyone else. So that was yeah, the first thing that like, I noticed. Yeah. yeah. You just, you sound like everyone else and you don't yep. stand out at all. Yep. So that was the first thing I noticed is like the key thing that most people are messing up on with their VSL. The next thing after that was really that like people talk too much about themselves. I don't think that people really understand that people don't care about you. They care about themselves and their problems and their situations and their circumstances and their, their pain points and all that good stuff. So 
I think that people do that. They talk about themselves a lot in their story to build up credibility, to build up, you know, hey, this is why I'm the guy. This is why you should listen to me, like to make people actually want to listen to them. But you should achieve that through understanding their problems and being able to communicate their problems better than they could communicate it themselves by communicating the desired situation that they want better than they want to communicate or better than they, than they can communicate themselves. And then by showing how you can actually do that. Like if I did that and I never mentioned who I was on there and then just said, hey, and, and if you want a solution here, like, you know, here's who all the people we've done it for. Like they won't care. They literally won't care. I could never mention myself in the video and people won't care. So my video doesn't say anything about me. It doesn't give any experience yeah. or any background or anything. You and prove I, it by I, talking. Well, because yeah. they don't care about me yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah. At the end of the day, they don't care about me yet, and I don't need to qualify it to them, and I don't need to justify it to them. And I take a totally different approach. And I think so many people feel a lack of confidence in all the things that you're saying right now, so they go in directly with the qualifications and qualifications and qualifications. It drives me nuts. I, I yeah. skip through every VSL I've ever watched to date because the first ten minutes are all just a bunch of you know credibility pontification. Yeah, and it's like, show me yeah. something I don't know. Tell me something I don't know. Give me something that relates to what I'm trying to deal with. And then I'll care about you because literally no one cares about you until they connect with you. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. They don't care. So no. it, it's it's people going on and on about their stories, my family, and here's what I've been able to do. That and, doesn't always connect. Like, that, that's the old connection style. Not in the yeah. short attention span world. You've given us a different framework yeah. for actually getting to the point, valuing the yeah. statement, getting people to say yes in their mind repeatedly because they now yeah. understand they're building a no like, and trust relationship in that process even if they don't get it yet. Absolutely. And you've built a framework that helps people understand how to approach this differently. So what's the last mm -hmm. thing? I mean, what's the thing that you could give the the, the poo-flinging, ending, monkey scratching, uh, don't taste like chicken advice at the end of this call that we could give somebody on the way out the door here? The best thing, like the best piece of advice there I really do think that when it comes down to VSL is that like you have these three buckets that you're in, okay? So there's your argument and that's what we're talking about, how you're presenting the information. Like understand that you you are delivering an argument. You are no different than uh, a lawyer presenting its case in front of, you know, the entire courtroom. That's, that's the same thing, you know? Um, so there's your argument. That's the main thing. But then the other thing is your visuals, okay? So what are people seeing? Is it just white background with black text or is it interesting? Is it a person that I'm watching? Like, is it visually stimulating, okay? And then the third thing is your actual tonality. So people like you and I, Neil, we know how to be able to talk in a way that's interesting. We make sound it interesting. Don't make, yeah, don't we make sound it boring fun. and talk like this yeah, all the time. Like this the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, like, so you have those three buckets that you are, it, 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 it's across the board, like every single VSL has those three buckets and they're either filled to the brim or they're completely empty. So some people have a really strong argument, but really weak visuals and really weak tonality. And so as a result, they don't convert at the highest rate that they could. So if you want to be able to actually raise your conversion rate, if you want to be able to have it where more and more people are buying, your audio or your argument needs to be super, super filled to the brim. Like that one, you can't have that one be at the bottom. Visuals and tonality do not make up for a bad argument. So that one always needs to be at the at the brim. Um, the visuals, you can have that about 50% full and still be fine. But ideally, you want to have each one of these buckets completely filled to the brim. Like tonality is important. I wouldn't say it's like the most important one. I would say the argument one's probably the in order of importance is argument. I would say argument visuals tonality because I've seen people get away with like a pretty monotone tone and still and still make it good. But when they go and they actually implement like, hey, let me go get a voice coach and let me actually like figure out how to like throw my voice and how to have tonality and how to like have inflection in my tone and everything like and that. Like natural language, natural conversation, not reading from Absolutely. a script. Absolutely. Um, big difference. Big difference. Yeah. So those three buckets are the main things that I think people need to focus on feeling. Yeah. Very, that's how very I good. Do. Man, yeah. thanks for coming on. We could literally keep going on this convo, but we keep it around 20, 25 minutes because I know you've got a lot more information you could continue to share. Amen. Guys, if you are trying to take this information and execute it today, I highly recommend it. You've got more than you maybe realize at this point. If you're in the leads gen, if you're in the business gen, if you're talking to customers and clients, even if you're local <laughs> and you're door salesman, if you are building VSLs and online business, this is all extremely relevant to how you approach your clients. Nick, thank you so much for showing up and sharing that today yeah. with us. And if somebody wants to get in connected with you and they just want to skip to the end and say, okay, write my VSL, um, guys, you you should know Nick has done so much in business. It would be weird for me to say it out loud and who he's worked with. I can't tell you because I can tell you how much it. they've done and how big it is. Um, so I can just give you my personal recommendation that if you want a VSL done for you and you do want the right person to get the right message and help you script that correctly and come off sounding natural, 
with all the right value buckets and everything filled to the top. Nick, how do they get a hold of you, man? Facebook's one of the best ways. I'm always on Facebook. So just Nick Verge on Facebook. You can find me on there. My banner literally just says the VSL guy. So you'll know it's me right away. Um, and if not, then then just email, I guess. So nicholasverge at gmail.com is one of the best ways. So it's just N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S, V as in victory, E-R-G-E. So nicholasverge at gmail.com. But my name is probably going to be on this thing. So just that at gmail.com. That or the links in below, obviously, or you can connect with me directly and I'll make sure we get an invite to you and Nick if anybody wants to talk with him directly. I'm more than happy to make that recommendation and introduction. And awesome. I got some work to do. I got to go fill some buckets. Go fill some buckets, brother. I'm, I'm, I will. <laughs> Thanks for your time today, bro. Awesome. Thank you, man. If you like this episode, please share it with people you think will enjoy it as well. Thank you for listening and be sure to tune in next week for a brand new episode of High Voltage Business Builders. 